guys, in today's video, let's look at how to return a result from a function in VBA. Now, if you're familiar with other programming languages, like Java, for example, you'll know about the return statement, where you return a value from the, the method, and it also serves to exit the method. Now, there's no such concept of a return statement in VBA. Instead, the name of the function serves as a variable. It's treated like a variable that you can then assign values to it. So let's see a quick example of how to do that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a function to calculate the area, which is the multiplication of two numbers. So let's get that coded. So function area. and it will return a long value. So let's close that out. And uh, for input, we're going to take, let's say, x as long and y as long. So we're going to take in two long uh, variables, uh, parameters, and then we're going to multiply them. So let's say area equals to x multiplied by y. Okay, so this this value, we are assigning it to the name of our function. It will be x multiplied by y. Okay, so that's all there is to it. And now let's create a, uh, a sub where we will call this function. So let's call it uh, sub price. Okay, uh, and so the price will be our area multiplied by say uh, a dollar value a per square foot value so the dim PSF as long and then we'll dim our price as long as well okay so let's just assign a value of 100 to, to our PSF value so our price will then be our PSF variable multiplied by the area and then for the area when you open up the brackets you can see that you're taking uh, two parameters x as long y as long so let's uh, put in say two as our uh, length and two as our width so if we look at it it will do a multiplication of 2 by 2 and then multiply that by 100 so something simple and so let's uh, print the result debug.print our price okay so the answer should be 400 if I'm correct and you can see here it gets the answer of 400 Okay, so that was just a very simple example. Uh, I mentioned that the the value to the uh, function name, in this case area, it can be assigned multiple times and only the last value is taken. So if we were to have, say, uh, let's say we have like a default statement here. So default value. Okay, and then we'll say if area less than uh, if area less than zero on oh, oh, mind let's let's just say let's just assign it again area equals to zero just for demonstration purposes okay so here we have area equals to x multiplied by y and then here we have area equals zero so what's going to happen is when we run our sub price again it will take it should take the the last assigned value which is zero and then it will multiply that by 100 which would give us a value of zero so let's do that again yep and as you can see the value that's assigned is zero which is the last value so what what should you do if you if you want to exit like you have a conditional assignment and you want to exit the uh, function early. 
So in that case, you should use the uh, exit function uh, after you assign your value. So let's let me show you how that's done. So we could do something like this. If say x multiplied by y is greater than zero, then put it then we will assign it a value of area equals x times y and then we will say exit function else we will have a default value here area will be equal to zero so end if okay so in this case we will exit our function after assigning the value uh, and then the answer should be back to 400 so if you run it, yep, you can see here, the value is back to 400. Okay, so hope you found this useful. Uh, for completeness, I'm going to just include that if the function returns an object type, then instead of using, say, uh, doing an equals assignment, we will need to use the set keyword. So that's slightly different. Uh, let's let's look at a simple, quick example to, to do that. So okay, so let's say we have public function, or we don't need public. Actually, we just need function uh, test, and in this case, it's an object. So what a common object are range objects. So function test is range. Okay, and then we'll set our test to say range uh, A1. Okay, so we'll set test equals to range A1. And then now, if we have say a sub test 2 where we call this, we'll say something like dim r as range and then we will set r instead of r equals we will say set r equals to test okay and then so we could say debug dot print r dot address okay so it should give us a1 Yep, as you can see here, it gives us the value of A1. If you were to just use R equals, it will be an error. Yep, the object variable or with block variable not set. Okay guys, hope you found this useful. Um, uh, personally, I do use this uh, when I want to make my code more modular. Uh, I want to separate out certain functions that I call over and over again uh, from different subs in different subs rather than write these functions again and again within the sub themselves. So uh, do let me know if you have any questions or comments, happy to answer them. And I'll see you guys in the next video soon. Bye-bye.